You know that feeling you get sometimes? You'll be sat down of an evening enjoying a relaxing pastime, watching TV, enjoying a good book or perhaps a computer game. Suddenly there's a flicker in your peripheral. It wasn't there long enough for you to see what it was, so you spin to catch it. Of course, there was nothing there. There's never anything there. Personally, I've always blamed this on my fear of spiders. Upon seeing the glimpse, will immediately spin to check that one of the spindly blighters isn't cascading down the ceiling towards my face. That was, of course, until I learnt about the girl with no name. Elias Humphreys had always wanted a son. Having achieved an exceptional wealth and career, it was now his life's ambition to father a bouncing baby boy, a strong, healthy young man to continue his legacy and contribute to the proud family name. Elias had three older brothers, all of whom had fathered only sons. It was a matter of great family pride that Humphrey's blood could only produce proud, powerful men. Well, you can imagine Elias's fury then, when his wife gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. The moment he looked upon the girl, Elias was beside himself. He cursed his wife, calling her a harlot, accusing her of being unfaithful, that if the child was his, then it surely could only have been a boy. He used his considerable influence to have his wife locked in prison, and he took the girl home with the intention of drowning her. But when it came to it, when he looked into those innocent, helpless eyes, he could not do it. It wasn't the girl's fault, nor her choice to disappoint him. So she was allowed to live. But in secret, in the now abandoned east wing of his estate, never to come out, never to see the light of day, to spend her entire life in the dark with only a blind servant to care for her. Elias would never again intervene with his daughter's life until the day he died. Eleven years later, one violent stormy night, Elias was returning home after a lively evening of poker. It had been a very profitable evening, and so he had been very heavily at the drink. He was exceedingly pleased with his spoils, and that was when he saw something that struck terror to his very soul. A flickering light could be seen in one of the windows of the east wing of his estate, the so-called abandoned east wing, the east wing that contained his darkest secret. In a fit of drunken rage and terror, Elias grabbed a gas lantern and broke into his own home. It was an alien world. There was a different kind of darkness here. A darkness that had made this place its home. A thick black ooze that clung to the walls, slithering away at the light of Elias's gas lantern, only to creep back again once he had passed. Behind him, it created an impenetrable barrier of black. The one upside of it was that it was so dark that he was able to find the source of the light with relative ease. The flickering firelight danced in a rotting doorway. He eased upon the door, careful not to make a sound. It was a good thing too, for what he saw next made him keen never to make a sound again. I wish mere words were enough to describe the horror before Elias' eyes at this moment. You see, children need the sun for their glowing pink skin and glistening, hopeful eyes. Without the sun, Elias' daughter had grown pale, shallow skin. It hung like a cloth over her feeble bones, her hair draped like thin straw over her bulbous head. But most horrifying of all, the one thing that made Elias regret every decision that had led to this moment were the black, pitted holes through which the girl stared at the dancing firelight in front of her. He couldn't help himself. The sight was so astounding, he let out a weak yelp before clapping a heavy hand over his mouth. The girl stopped immediately, her ears pricked like a deer on high alert. 
This sound was new. It was different. It was almost alien. She began to raise clumsily onto her shuddering legs. Though for almost her entire life, she had never heard him speak. Somehow a daughter knows her father's voice. Papa, she called in a weak whisper vo of a voice. Elias sunk into the shadows, hoping to evade her. She was almost completely blind. He tried not to breathe as the girl approached. She had spent her entire life scrambling around in the darkness. This was her domain and he could not escape her here. Papa? He turned his back to her. Even after all this time, he could not face what he had done. He could not look his daughter in the eye. He paused, listening for her footsteps. But drunken blood pumped wildly through his ears. He froze, a voluntary paralysis. He could hear her bare feet patting the carpetless floor. She appeared in the corner of his eye, the dark hollows staring accusingly, pleading for affection, for recognition. No longer able to contain himself, Elias let out a shriek and threw himself against the wall, the lantern smashing heavily as he writhed against the sludging darkness. The door seemed to be missing. In his blind panic, he could no longer find it. He sank to the ground, clutching his shaking knees to his chest, every fibre of his being begging him to show humility, to apologise, but he could not shake his colossal guilt. He felt the chill of her breath padding the back of his neck. A tiny trembling hand ran its feathery fingers up his spine. His blood seemed to stop. He heard a tongue brush over dry, cracked lips, which then pursed themselves together to form that all-accusing, heart-breaking word. Papa? Then Elias Humphreys died. It was some months before the body was discovered. There were no signs of a struggle, no bruises or lacerations. He simply ceased to be. The only discovery was to be made by the coroner, whom, upon his inspection of the body, lifted the eyelids to find the pupils fixed in an off-centred direction, staring at the corner of the room, watching. He had performed the remainder of the inspection with the eyes closed. He could not shake the feeling that the dead man could see something in the room that he could not. The house and its grounds were passed into the care of one of Elias's brothers, apart from the east wing, which was condemned and demolished. Elias took his secret to the grave. The girl was never found. And that's why, whenever you catch a glimpse in the corner of your eye, you will always spin to catch her. You see, the poor girl had nothing in life, not even a name. So she is searching, searching for affection, searching for, for recognition, for some kind of warmth in this entire world. So the next time you catch that flicker, you need simply spin, pay attention to her, and she will be happy. If you decide not to turn, Let's just say you have been warned. <laughs>